Hello Year 10, Mr Angier here, I hope you're safe and well. What are the features of a river's middle course is what we're going to be tackling this week, uh, our lesson three. Just a reminder, um, although I'm doing the PowerPoints for Year 10, please continue to send questions and your work to your usual classroom teachers. So, in order to be able to successfully do the work for this week, we need to be able to describe the features of the middle course. And again, just a reminder, this term described means being able to say what you see in front of you, what's actually there. And then we need to explain the processes of the middle course. So how and why are all of these things happening? Now, you will remember that these um, I suppose uh, learning objectives are pretty similar to last week so there is a familiar pattern coming here but this week we're going to be looking at the middle course. So as mentioned uh, you were looking at the upper course of the river last week and what I'd like you to do is pause the PowerPoint and write down as many things as you can remember about the upper course. You can either draw a spider diagram or write a list up to you. Give yourself three minutes. I'll see you in three minutes time. Welcome back. Uh, hopefully you got as many uh, facts and uh, details down about the upper course as possible, uh, but again, don't panic if you couldn't remember. So last week we were looking at the upper course. We find the source of the river there. We find a small river. We find that it erodes vertically, but it doesn't erode laterally. Uh, it's too small and young to do that at this stage. It can't, uh, or hasn't got the power to shift the land either side of it. It doesn't, it's not able to do that yet. We also find that um, in the upper course of the river, we're talking about quite a steep gradient here, aren't we? Um, and this week, we're going to be moving into the middle course of the river, and you'll see that the river has become slightly bigger now. And we'll talk about why that is in a few moments' time. Um, the land has also started to level out. It's becoming a little bit flatter. And we're also beginning to see some of these curves in the river as well. So we'll have to talk about what they are in a few moments time. Now some of the features, for the first time um, we are seeing um, what's called a flood plain uh, and we're also seeing a tributary. Now I've just said that rivers get bigger the further downstream you go and there's a very good reason for that. Now tributaries are small rivers that join the larger river. So if I just map on here what's actually happening, we've got a smaller river and it's joining the larger river. And every time that happens, the river gets slightly wider. So you can imagine that up here, uh, close to the source, there's not that much opportunity for that to have happened. And by the time we get down here to the mouth, loads of tributaries have joined. There's one there, there's another one there. There'll be ones coming off um, over here as well. Um, loads and loads of tributaries by this point, making our river slightly larger every single time. Now there's also a floodplain and floodplains are relatively easy to understand because they essentially do what they say on the tin. They are areas where the river floods. So it's areas just to the side of the river. Uh, it's the first place that floods when a river bursts its banks. Again, um, you have seen these um, slides before. So the upper course, um, just remember, small river only erodes vertically and it's got this V-shaped valley and we tend to find um, things like waterfalls um, alongside. Uh, we've got some weathering taking place on the sides of our V-shaped valley and we've got some transportation uh, moving all of that material that's fallen from the valley uh, sides into the river and being carried away. Now we're moving into a flatter valley floor and you can see there is a slightly flatter valley floor and this is because for the first time the river itself has actually started to erode the land either side of it. We're calling that lateral erosion. So the river still continues to erode downwards a little bit, but it's now also beginning to damage its banks and erode its banks away. And we're going to have a look at what actually uh, is the consequences of all of that in just a moment. 
So some of the features. Now, for the first time, we're beginning to see these big curves in rivers, and these curves are called meanders. Now, essentially, um, as with all rivers um, that are moving, they uh, are still subject to the forces of gravity. Uh, and it's a little bit like when you go around a roundabout and you try and crush your brother or sister um, and you say g-force oh, I can't sorry it's it's not my fault I couldn't help it well the river does that to the bank as well um, it's something that we call helicoidal flow and this lateral sort of g-force if you like puts enormous pressure on the bank so if you look at this red area here um, that area is being eroded it's been damaged by the river um, and again we'll be talking here about things like um, hydraulic action so the force of the water um, pushing air into the cracks and, and just the speed of the water ripping away particularly soft material we're going to be talking about attrition and abrasion and the chemicals in the solution eating away at our banks so it's happening here. It's happening on all the outsides of the bends, really, isn't it? Again, um, going round our roundabout, we, we sort of force ourselves to be outside, don't we, to crush our brother or sister or friend, um, unless, of course, um, you're a, 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 a nice and mature young man, in which case I'm sure you won't be doing that. Now, we've also got something else. So for the first time, we're beginning to see areas of deposition. Now, deposition just means material that has been dropped off. All right? If you go to a bank to put some money in the bank, you are depositing money in the bank. Uh, many of you are deposited by your parents. When you come to school in the morning, you are dropped off. And the river is beginning to deposit material uh, that's been transported from the upper course to the middle course. And you can see that here. So where the river is um, on the outside of the bends, damaging the banks and ripping away on the inside of the bends what we're actually seeing is the river slowing down and dropping material when a river moves quickly when any water moves quickly it has a higher carrying capacity and that just means the ability uh, of the river to carry material and so on the outside of the bends the river's moving pretty quickly um, this uh, helicoidal flow is forcing the water around the outsides, moving nice and quickly. But on the inside of the bend, the river's slowing down. Um, and um, that's mainly due to the fact that there's a lot more friction on the inside of the bend due to the shape of the river. Um, and uh, that in turn means that the water is slowing down, the carrying capacity of the river drops, and the material is deposited on the inside. Now, one thing that's going to happen is, that, as you can see here in the second image, um, we've got two areas of erosion taking place and eventually these two are going to meet. And over here on the final um, uh, image, you've got the consequence of all of this. Eventually, um, the two areas uh, which we're going to meet do meet and the water being a bit lazy, I'm afraid, lazy water will take the quickest possible route out of the river system so what you have is the river channel um, becoming straighter and we're left with something called an oxbow lake again um, exactly the same thing here um, it's just another way of looking at um, the image if you didn't like the last slide so I'll get rid of all of that you can see where the erosion and the deposition is so the deposition is always on the inside the erosion is on the outside now the other thing that I said that you're going to start seeing is floodplains now um, meanders um, these curves in the river they tend to become more exaggerated over time so if you look from uh, left to right. You can see that the river starting off, um, the meanders are, are relatively small um, uh, at stage one or then they're, they're not occurring at all. So at stage one, by stage two they're getting a little bit bigger and by stage three you can see how wide these meanders are becoming. Now every time these meanders, I'll put number three up here, every time these meanders get a little bit bigger, they are eroding and they are flattening a wider area. Okay, so all of this area, this area here perhaps used to be in the river, this area here 
used to be in the river. Um, but as these meanders have um, grown wider and wider and wider, the land becomes flatter on the either side of the river. And this is a really nice diagram to demonstrate that. Now, what I'd really recommend all of you do is at this point, pause this video and open up the PowerPoint version of uh, this week's work and click on this link here because this link uh, takes you to a video which really nicely demonstrates all of this. So I'd strongly recommend that you have a look at that video. Now the process is, um, last week we talked about erosion. So again, I would like you to pause the video and I'd like you to give yourself three minutes to write down the four ways in which a river erodes. Um, and it's good to name them, but it's even better to explain what actually happens. So see if you can do both. See you in three minutes. OK, um, hope that got your brain thinking a little bit. And this, of course, was what we were looking at last week. So first of all, hydraulic action is the power of the water forcing air into cracks uh, and forcing those cracks to become bigger and wider. And you've also got simply the force of the water um, moving. Uh, particularly soft material, uh, soils and clays and things like that, moving that material um, away from where it would otherwise be. The solution is just the chemicals in the water eating away at the rocks and the soils. The abrasion refers to these um, rocks grazing the uh, bottom and sides of the river. Um, and then attrition is these smaller particles knocking into each other and becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Now we need to talk about the next uh, river process, which we're beginning to see a little bit more of in the middle course, um, and that is transportation. OK, so obviously we've, we've got deposition um, beginning to occur as well. The deposition simply means dropping off material and the, the river really only does that in one way. The transportation is another slightly more uh, tricky one. So what we will do is start down here with traction. So traction just refers to the force of the water moving these large boulders along. So water is um, it's pretty strong, it's pretty powerful, and it can actually move these boulders along. And these boulders are eventually uh, going to be um, nudged further and further down the riverbed. Suspension refers to these really, really small um, particles in the river being suspended in the middle of the water. So if you were to go out into the River Thames, where we are in Maidenhead at the moment, and scoop your hand into the water, you might pick up a few little bits of sand and silt which are being sort of suspended in the middle of the water. That is suspension. Now, solution just refers to the chemicals which are being transported within the water all of the time. So I've talked about solution being a way that um, rivers erode, and they do, but those chemicals, it's also important to say, are always and also moved along by the river as well. So solution is just the movement of the chemicals which are going to be causing some erosion. And then finally, saltation, um, very similar to traction, although rather than looking at these big monstrous boulders up here, saltation refers to these much, much smaller stones and pebbles, and they tend to skip along the riverbed. And you're far more likely to see saltation um, in the upper course of the river, where the river again is, is not as powerful as it currently is now, um, and um, it's moving sort of small little uh, stones and, uh, and pebbles like that. So, what we were aiming to do this week was to describe the features of the middle course. Hopefully you can describe uh, things like the floodplain and tributaries and meanders now and how they are formed. And then explain um, not only the processes of transportation, but also recall the processes of erosion that we have revisited from last week. Thank you very much. I hope you're still safe and well and any further questions or comments, please go to your class teacher. Thank you very much.